Hello and welcome to today's Astranti Bite Size video. Today we're going to be learning a really important topic that's going to be useful to you and no matter what stage of your SEMA studies you are at from E1 all the way up to E3 including all of your case studies and that's Mendelo's Matrix and we're going to be doing this by looking at an extract of one of our tuition videos. So firstly let's find out about stakeholder power because stakeholder power is all about to what degree a stakeholder is able to affect and influence an organization. And we've looked at stakeholder needs already, haven't we? We saw that directors expected a good rate of pay and a bonus. And we also know that stakeholders have a lot of power because they're able to shape the strategy of an organization. And so it makes sense, doesn't it? The degree to which the stakeholder needs are considered as part of the strategy setting process depends on the level of power they have over the organization. And so it tends to be that the powerful groups, their needs are going to be tended to before the less powerful groups. So let's have an example. Let's think of large customers, so customers that can buy an organization's goods in large quantities. Now, they're going to have significant power because if they decide to stop buying in significant quantities, an organization is going to have to find other customers. It might have to reduce its production, which might mean it has to lay off some of its staff. And so their needs are going to be prioritized when an organization is setting its strategy. However, smaller customers, those customers that are buying in smaller quantities, well, they've got far less power over the organization because the organization doesn't need to prioritize their needs. Because if they don't, if the smaller customer doesn't purchase from them anymore, they can be quite easily replaced. And if we think back to our school example, who do you think holds the power at the school? Well, it would be the teachers that occupy senior positions because they would have the ability to affect the policies of the school because of their position, as would the governors and the directors. But a stakeholder who wouldn't have much power is a dinner lady. And now this is because a dinner lady only works for a school on a part-time basis and they have a limited role. And they certainly wouldn't be able to affect any strategy or policy changes. But as such, it's far more likely that the dinner lady's needs are going to be far less prioritised than those of the senior teachers and the directors. So we've established what stakeholder power means. Let's just zoom back out from our what are the stakeholders section. And what we're going to do now is move on to stakeholder mapping, where we take into account the power that stakeholders have over an organization as a way for organizations to manage their relationships. So let's zoom in to Mendelo's matrix. So before we do anything else, let's bring up the matrix itself. Let's have a look at the overall a makeup of it before I zoom in. So we can see that along the left hand side we've got the power going from low to high. Now we've already talked about stakeholder power haven't we? And then across the top we've got interest. Now we're going to come to that in a second but again it's going from low to high. And then in the actual matrix quadrants itself we've got minimal effort, we've got keep informed, keep satisfied and key player, keep close. So remember, Mendelo's matrix is all about mapping out strategies for organizations so that they can manage their stakeholders or the different groups of stakeholders effectively. So let's just make sure we understand what stakeholder power means. We should do, we've just had a section on it, but it is the ability of a stakeholder to influence an organization and affect its decision making. So for example, a CEO has high power because of course they're helping to shape the strategy of an organization and affect its decision making, whereas a part-time employee wouldn't have much power because they wouldn't have much responsibility to change or affect the strategies or the decision making of an organization. 
And of course, the other criteria on Mendeleev's matrix is interest. Now, interest is all about how much interest does the stakeholder have in the organization? Because if they've got a lot of interest, then the organization is going to have to increase its level of communication with them. And so if we think about employees again, the majority of employees will have little power, but of course they will have a lot of interest in the business because they care about where their next paycheck is coming from. They want to make sure that the business is performing well so they have a stable job. And so it's important that the organization communicates its plans to the employees, even though they don't have much power, so as the organization can retain the loyalty and motivation of the stakeholders. And so by using those two criteria, the stakeholders are categorized to minimal effort or keep informed or one of the quadrants and then treated differently depending on where they feature on the matrix. So let's go and have a look at these four quadrants in more detail. And we're going to start with minimal effort because this is where as you can see stakeholders have a low interest and low power in the business so let's have an example now we've talked about the local community being an external stakeholder and that's because the local community isn't really that interested in the business in its policies and its procedures and its long-term strategy and it has no influence in fact the Probably the only time it really would have an interest is if the business did something that affected the local community. So, for instance, if it suddenly built a new production facility in the middle of a residential area, then, of course, that interest would change. But as a general rule, the interest for the local community would be low. And so remember, this matrix is all about placing stakeholders in the appropriate quadrant so the organization knows how to communicate them in a sense how to manage them so if we stick with our local community stakeholder as an example the minimal effort criteria would basically mean the organization would have to give them the basic information to meet their needs so let's imagine there was some kind of fairly unobtrusive business work uh, building works pardon me going on in the local community's area then it'd be nice of the organization, might be pertinent for the organization to provide information to the community on what they're planning to do, how they're planning to do it, how it might affect their local transport links temporarily, etc. Just so the situation doesn't escalate. Because if they don't provide that basic information, then suddenly this stakeholder group may become more interested. And then suddenly they might get other bodies involved such as the local council saying why weren't we told about this I don't think this is appropriate and then the situation can spiral so this is all about maintaining and making sure that stakeholders have the appropriate information so that the business or the organization can get buy-in if you remember that term from earlier on so they can get support from their stakeholders and trying to avoid conflict as far as possible Okay, so that's minimal effort, that's low interest, low power. We zoom back to the full matrix now. We're going to go to the next one along, which is high power. So it's not, it's high interest, low power. Keep informed is high interest, low power. I'm starting to confuse my st myself now. Now, I've already touched on this stakeholder in my example, but... A stakeholder that might have high interest in a company, but low power, maybe a full-time employee. And of course, this wouldn't be a senior employee that had decision-making abilities because they would have high power. This is just a standard full-time employee. Now, of course, as I said earlier, they're interested in the policies, the procedures, and the pay in the organization because it affects them directly. So they're very interested in any changes of policy. And we can see, can't we, quite a contrast between them and the local community. Employees are going to be directly affected day to day on what the organization decides. And any strategic changes, of course, they're going to be affected by as well. So let's imagine we've got an employee working in a factory. They would, of course, be very concerned if the factory were planning to close 
and the fact she was having to enact a redundancy program. But an individual full-time employee, however, has little power. So if they said, well, I'm not happy with this planned redundancy program, I want it to stop, what do you think the organisation would do? Well, they probably would do very little. That one individual stakeholder has little power but high interest in the organisation. So remember, this matrix is about how the company should communicate with them. And with a high interest, low power stakeholder, the organisation should make sure they regularly communicate with them, especially in the things that are of interest. So, for example, the employees would be especially interested in a redundancy program because, of course, the effects are really far reaching and really could affect their personal lives. So, of course, in that situation, especially regular communication would be vital. And, of course, we've talked about an individual employee not having much power. And one of the reasons why an organization would want to regularly communicate with them is so that individual employee doesn't become dissatisfied and decides to get together with other employees in a bid to increase their power. Because suddenly if you've got all your employees, your full-time employees, and they're unionized, suddenly they have a lot more power. So one of the aims of this matrix is to keep the stakeholders satisfied so they don't seek to increase their power. Okay, let's zoom out slightly from the matrix again. And we're going to zoom into, let me get it right this time, high power, low interest. And that's keep satisfied. That's the technique, keep them satisfied. So we mentioned when we were talking about stakeholders earlier on uh, that the government would be a good example of a stakeholder with high power but low interest. Now, of course, they've got high power because they can impose laws, rules, and, of course, as you can see on screen, taxes. And the organisation has to respect those laws and has to abide by them. But they're low interest because actually, compared with a full-time employee, the government has very little interest in the day-to-day -day running and the strategic changes of an individual organisation. But, of course, should they decide to become interested in the business, they would have a huge amount of power. And so, in a bid to avoid them exercising their power, an organisation should keep them satisfied. And they should do that by paying their taxes on time and by abiding by the law and making sure that all necessary information is given to them. So maybe the government needs profit information so they can assess the correct level of tax the organisation should be paying. So again, we're grouping stakeholders in a way that keeps them satisfied, keeps them informed so that they don't seek to increase their power over the organization. Let's zoom out now and let's zoom in again to our final category, which is high power, high interest. These are our key players and we must keep our key players close because key players have power to shape strategy and they have a high interest in how the organization is progressing. So again, this is another stakeholder we've already talked about vaguely a CEO is very interested in receiving a good salary and they can also exercise their power through voting in director meetings so they're interested in getting a good salary is reflected in being very interested in the organization and their power is reflected in their ability to be able to vote in director meetings to shape and affect the organization now as you can see on the title in front of you, key players mustn't be kept close. It's a bit of a tongue twister. Key players must be kept close. And so regular communication is maintained with them. And not only is communication maintained, because that kind of implies a passive, the organisation letting, letting the key players know what's happening. But in fact, in this instance, the key players' goals and objectives must be included as part of the organization's strategy setting process and business approach. Because, of course, if their 
objectives and goals aren't included in the organization strategy from the get-go from the off and if it dissatisfies them if it dissatisfies the key players then of course they will have the ability to change it going along and so it's much better to get their thoughts on board at the beginning of the process okay so there is our Mendelo's matrix hopefully I've provided a really clear distinction between the four sets of classifications provided on the matrix and remember we've used some stakeholder examples but remember the stakeholders are different and the stakeholders depend on the industry they're in and the type of company at the time as well it all is very situation specific we've given very broad outlines of stakeholders because remember full-time employees for example if they were unionized would suddenly go up through the power or if they were senior employees would go up power wise as well so it does depend on the situation and as it depends on the situation let's have an example and we're going to go back to trusty old Bob and his local chain of cafes and what we've got here is Bob's Mendelo's matrix okay what I would like you to do now we've got Bob's matrix up is to put four groups of stakeholders onto the matrix for me and the first group of stakeholders so I'm gonna ask you to pause me so I'm just gonna read out the four groups of stakeholders first the first group of stakeholders is Bob Saturday help that come in every Saturday and help him with his busiest day so they work down the tables and they take orders to the tables and they help clear up after then we've got Bob's full-time staff uh, who work there from nine to five six days a week we've got the food service regulator now they provide spot inspections making sure that Bob is abiding by the food safe safety regulations of his territory and then we've got Bob himself so what I would like you to do now is to pause me um, take a couple of minutes and then unpause me and we'll talk about where we put them onto the matrix okay pause me now okay so hopefully you've taken a minute just to pop the stakeholders onto the matrix for me so first you will begin with the part-time staff now these part-time staff are just Saturday help they clean the tables they wait the tables and then they clear up after after pardon me so they have very little strategic power don't they if Bob suddenly wanted to open a new shop or close his existing shop really the part-time staff would have very little say in it and that's an extreme example so it just shows you how little power they do have and in terms of interest I wonder if you went for high interest or low interest now I'd be tempted to go for low interest here because they are just the Saturday staff so it's not like they're getting a huge amount of money for this work perhaps they are uh, doing it uh, in between school and so they'd probably be able to find Saturday work elsewhere. Now that would be different to the full-time staff, which I'll come on to in a second. But the communication with the Saturday help would be simply tell them what to do. You don't have to try and get buy-in from this part-time staff. They come in on a Saturday morning, you tell them what to do, and then you tell them what hours you want them to come in the following week. That would be the limit of the communication that would be required with them according to Mendelo's matrix. But with the full-time staff, I've gone for the same amount of power, but I've gone for higher interest. And that's simply because of what we spoke about earlier on. These guys would have much more vested interest in the organization. So Bob should hold regular meetings, let them know what's happening with the strategies, if there are any changes to the processes, all those kind of things just so that they maintain buy-in and they keep motivated and they keep working well and then we're dropping down to the higher power but low interest which would be the food service regulator just like we spoke about with the government hopefully the food service regulator wouldn't come around wouldn't provide any problems for Bob as long as Bob was keeping them satisfied by meeting their regulations and as long as Bob's doing that then the food service regulators interest in the organization shouldn't escalate 
And now we've got Bob. Bob himself is the key player. I don't know if you remember from earlier on, but he's the sole shareholder. Um, and so he certainly would be a key player because he can shape strategy and he can shape the processes. So he really can affect an organization. And of course, if it all went wrong, Bob would be terribly affected by it being the sole shareholder. So there we go. That's a very quick example just to show you that it changes depending on the stakeholder and it can change where stakeholders are placed depending on the organization okay so there we go a nice short video that gives you all the information you need on a major topic that you can use throughout your team of studies as well as your professional career now if you like this video why not go to the strategy website and check out the whole thing we've got a whole host of tuition videos on there of all the SEMA subjects you can imagine and perhaps you don't want to look at any more videos, then, then practice some of our Astranti mock questions or exam practice kits to make sure that you're ready for your exam. And if you simply want to get more videos like this, then be sure to like and subscribe to our channel. Thank you so much for listening and good luck with your exams.